hello everyone. Our next session will now talk about unifying the CMOs and shed light on the driving force of brands and what actually makes CMOs influential today. Please welcome Amjad Al Sabah. He's a regional director of EMEA North Gulf at Sprinkler. Amjad is a strategic customer experience expert and results driven leader with a track record in sales growth and turnaround success in challenging settings across several industries within the region. He's on a mission to support MIA CMOs to be recognized in the global Forbes most influential 50 CMOs list. Welcome Amjad and over to you. Hi Aziza, thank you for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys and you know um, uh, talking to the uh, the region's um, you know marketing leaders. So uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I um, I'm ready to um, basically start taking you through this uh, little 20 minute journey. We're excited to hear all about your presentation. Awesome. <clears throat> Great. Um, so, you know, I, I chose this uh, topic because, you know, out of, um, I think out of excitement and out of, you know, what I saw during um, our participation as Sprinkler in identifying the top influential CEOs globally with, with, with Forbes. And I, and I wondered, why didn't this region have any names in there, honestly. And I believe this region has um, has amazing talent. And I believe there are great leaders, great brands. But what's missing? What's missing? Why can't we in this region be you know, qualified for that? Why are we not on that list? So it is my mission, really. And I, I mean it with every word that I put into my introduction. It is really my mission to help and support CMOs in our region to be really recognized globally. Because there's amazing work that's being done, really. In, in, um, in, uh, in our region. There's lots of, you know, very strong um, talents um, and visionaries, you know, that can definitely be part of that. So what I want to do today with you guys is I want to basically share with you um, the methodology of this, um, you know, um, this, this, this uh, great list, talk about it and how we um, reach that um, conclusion. And then I want to talk to you about why our CMOs today under pressure and why do we believe that CMOs are, are unifiers? So the, the, the methodology of, of identifying the, these influential um, you know, CMOs globally is very simple. It's about you know, um, looking at data sets, using sprinkler technology to look at more than, one, more than 4 billion um, social uh, data points, listening to news, blogs, uh, webs, uh, web, Twitter mentions, and also with the support of our um, partner LinkedIn, look at more than 6 million profile views, connections and engagements. Now, what we did a bit differently this year is that we've added a layer of, um, of AI on top of this. Why? Because we believe, we believe that uh, you know, um, qualitative indicators are as important as quantitative. And we wanted to really look at the creme de la creme of, of that list. So we added customer sentiment. So we looked at customer sentiment using um, benchmarking. We looked at the tone of the news coverage, which is extremely important. We also looked at social media sentiment when it comes to the brand and to um, to the CMO. And that's why uh, we looked. Uh, we 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 were able to identify those um, those top fifty influential. And I hope one day I can help and I can help this region really also bring out. The, the leaders and marketeers from um, from 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 to to the top fifty global um, uh, Forbes. Um, so the entire conversation is really what what's happening today and what's happening with with CMOs. And we really understand, we really know that CMOs, you know, are under pressure. They're under pressure by the CEOs because they are expected to drive, you know, they drive revenue increase. They're they're expected to maximize efficiency. They are they, they are also tasked with you know reducing and you know maximizing cost efficient uh, cost efficiencies and on top of all of that they are you know they are faced with a changing consumer behavior in real time the consumer is pivoting left and right and that is why uh, uh, CMOs are under a lot of pressure you know you work on your strategy 
But you, we, what we're, we're not realizing is that really consumer behavior is driving and they are in the driver's seat and they are changing different the tactics on, on, you know, on, 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 in real time. But what we discovered with our participation with Forbes and the most influential um, CMOs is that the CMOs that have been identified are, as influential are doing two main things that are driving that is driving their success. The first thing is they are getting closer to consumers. This is, I mean, technology plays a big part in that. You know, using all the data that they are getting to, they are getting from, you know, their various uh, touch points. The second great thing that these CMOs are doing is that they are acting as chief unifying officer. And what does that mean? It means they are acting as unifiers within the across silos and their companies to bring the company closer as much as they can to the consumer. And that is really the holy grail. How, you, how, how do you come closer to this consumer? To consumer? By bringing those various stake, stakeholder groups across all these markets, across your front office functions to unify the customer experience. To unify the the CX, and what we also um, you know some of the numbers that we discovered also that the average volume of CX related mentions per CMO is extremely high. So you've got top the, in the top fifty CMOs, them just talking about you know mentions related to customer experience is higher than you know the, the other other CMOs. What we also found out is that the key themes in media coverage of CMOs revolves really more around CX. And the innovations championed by, uh, by, by these CMOs, including mobile and 5G, luxury goods, convenience, sustainability, and AI and machine learning. And we're going to really get, get into that. Um, what I wanted also to do is basically share with you some of the thoughts of those. You know, I, I chose three top um, CMOs some, uh, from the list, and I wanted to share with you what they really think about you know, when it comes to brands and consumers. So to look at Bozoma St. John, who's been doing a great job at, uh, at, at Netflix. What, what does she say? She says that brands who have a healthy dose of curiosity and healthy intention to get to know the people, to understand the culture, to speak to them in their language, literally and figuratively, are the ones who win. And that's the way she approaches marketing everyone, and so does Netflix. And then you've got, and, and then you've got um, William White, who is... Um, who is the chief CMO of Walmart, he says that we've been actively trying to shorten the distance between inspiration and purchase for our customers. Very, very clear. When someone is inspired by our product, we want to be there to help close the transaction. So we made a number of advancements in social commerce space. Customer centricity has always been a focus on our company. And that is why Mr. William White has been chosen. The part of the thinking, you know, these CMOs is all about how to get closer to the customer. Melissa, on the other hand, has a very similar point of view, but she highlights something extremely important. And we were talking about, I, I, I heard the first session talking about personalization. When you start to look at personalization, that's what she says, and what it means, what technologies we're using is just as important as the data. Because you've got data all over. So how do we start get the right technology? How are we really going to use these things to drive the right experience and keep it manual, but keep people really engaged? And to be honest, you know, Technology this can do two things. It can either it can help you, or it can cripple you. Help you by using the technology, by you to get you know data in real time. Uh, what what's an astonishing um, you know uh, piece of data is that we've through with with a study that we did with McKinsey um, last year, we identified that there are at least at least ninety one point solutions in a tech stack. And that is completely unsustainable. That is just completely chaotic. You're chaotic. You talk about customer experience and we talk about, you know, personalization. And yet we've got, you know, tens and tens of point solutions. So how are you, how are you, how are you going to be able to extract this data from those solutions and make sense of it? It's completely unsustainable. But CMOs today can begin to unify their own tech stack and start from there. Your social, your live chat, your AI. Your emails, your outbound, your outbound, you know, start routing when it comes to care or product innovation. And if you look at really, if you look at the, the, the ecosystem today, you know, when it comes to front office uh, facing functions like research, care, marketing, there is hundreds and hundreds of, of, of point solutions out there. 
And what we what we like to do um, at Sprinkler is really what, and we've been advocating this, and, and hence the title of my of my session is CMOs are really the driving should be the driving force behind um, behind unification and behind um, you know the driving data from different touch points into single you know platform to be able to make sense of this data and drive engagement, drive marketing. And drive um, drive customer care. <clears throat> so of course, we we would never you know say or we would never think about doing this without you know the existing platform. CRM is definitely at the foundation of all this. And what we're saying here is that CXM complements what CRM is doing. CRM started twenty years ago, and it's all about you know um, you know raw data on the customer. But to make that data really work for you. You need you need you need CXM, and the way it works. I mean, the way we we like to think about it from our perspective is that the way the world communicates has changed. So you need to be present. As simple as that. And you know, um, you look at if you look at the bottom of the chart here. I mean, you've got all these social media uh, channels uh, going for you, and you need to use this data to be able to um, make sense of it. And then the second layer is the AI layer, and this is the amount of experience that is. You know, really available. How do you make sense of this, all this, of this data? How do you use AI to, you know, create actionable insights to be able to make better decisions? And then the third layer is how do you unify all these functions? The expectations of connected customers have changed. So, take timely personalized action. We were, we were talking, discussing a while ago about personalization. There is no way you can do personalization unless you are able to really unify the customer experience. And by unifying, there is no way you can sustain a, a seamless customer experience uh, with multiple, with, with point solution, point solution chaos. It's as, it's as simple and that, as that. And when you look at, you know, how, how it's been evolving, you know, from, you know, your, from siloed CRM to unify 20 years ago, you know, CRM came online, brands were in control, you know, um, you, you, you were, you know, you were able to see some basic data and then CDPs came along and, you know, consumers started getting connected, but lots of gaps have emerged, you know, and, and we started bringing in point solutions to solve that problem. But then what we're saying here today is that a unified CXM platform is the one that's going to unify your customer experience across all digital um, customer facing functions, brands and consumers are able to connect and the, the sad reality is today is it's, it's not that it's not about what brands are saying it's not about what your company is saying it's not about the marketing campaign that you know says that we do this and that it's about the customer it's about the consumer and their their own perception their own perception of you you know i love what um yeah, Mark Richard said, said he said uh, a couple of months ago, he said, we're reinventing marketing as we know it. We're reinventing media from mass blast to mass one-on-one -on -one per precision. And that is that is the reality of it. That is exactly how, where we want to go. And AI and with you know in, implemented on the proper unified platform is what's gonna um, drive this for you. And then you know we, we come all around and why are we all why are why are we saying this why are we talking about be, you know the unification why are we talking about you know bringing uh, you know getting closer to the to the customer the story is like our mission it's, it's all about making your customer happier happier gents, ladies and gents not happy because happier is more tangible because by being where you are uh, where they are understanding and listening to what you know what they are saying you make your customers happier we allow you to do that we allow you to be with the customer we allow you uh, we allow your front office functions to work together pulling all your faculties together what are people talking i want to take you through some of the things that, you know that we've, we've we've identified you know using our listening platform and benchmarking what what are people talking about so 2021 2021 trends so far covid of course space oh my god it's been huge Travel, Bitcoin, racism, mental health. This is what the data is telling us. 126 million mentions of 1.3 trillion impressions talking about space. And you know what's been happening in terms of the space war between, between Bezos and, and Elon Musk. 
um, and, and of course, Richard Branson. But if you dig deep into the data, you'll find that there is lots of negative sentiment. And if you want to see what the negative sentiment is talking about, it's talking about poverty, arrogance, emissions, obscene, point and disgusting. There is a negative sentiment about this entire you know, uh, journey to space. There are people who are concerned that these guys are spending billions of dollars and you know, um, there's lots of still poverty. I'm sure you guys saw what the United Nations um, did with Elon Musk by challenging him with, with the 2%. So you identify these things, that's the, and and you know we did that on on our platform. And then there's also, of course, the positive people are also you know uh, resonating positively because it's quite inspirational. It's it's making people happy. There's opportunity. There's curiosity, and so on and so forth. Also, these mentions tell you exactly where where is this coming from. Now, if you want to look look even deeper, and that's what I'm talking about when it comes to AI and digging deeper into into the um, data and what you can um, actually extract from it. So when it comes to Bezos specifically and the topic of inspiring, we dug even more, uh, more into his mentions and they were basically distributed across five different, uh, uh, basically verticals, learning and education, rockets and tech, exploration, human experience and environment. And that's just purely from people just talking on, on social channels. It's as simple as that. And if you want to even look deeper at rockets and tech and look at that specific vertical, what is the point of discussions here? The major points are about reusability, fuel, AI, and machine learning. So that is the conversation that is happening if you want to look even deeper. And that's the power of data. And that's the power of how AI will be able to help marketeers really drive the right decisions into their organizations. Of course, climate change over the past um, two months has been a, a major a rise in terms of discussion, you know, and it, you probably see it on the news, but it's also a major topic in conversation. I would, I would think, I would predict that climate change is going to increase in terms of, in terms of uh, mentions. And that is it, ladies and gents. Um, I'm... Honestly, your presentation itself it was so engaging, was so interesting and inspiring that few times I wanted to be part of it. Of Elon Musk, the whole conversation. Thank you again. And you shared quite the roadmap for our ambitious marketers to success. Absolutely. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me.